Yo, I just bought a $92 katsu sandwich. Whoa! This right here is the best beef sandwich in New York City. I'm starting to think that the options for Asian sandwiches is like limitless. Bugogi, adobo, masala, pho, wagyu, and salted duck egg yolk. We are on a search for the best Asian sandwich in New York City. Why? Because they're made in America. It's a classic Western format, but crafted with an Asian soul. Much like how a lot of Asian Americans might feel. Perhaps we are the Asian sandwich. Anyways, listen, please hit that like button because you will not find these sandwiches anywhere else. And stay until the end to hear our top three picks. Let's go. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Curiosity Stream. They stream non-fiction TV shows and award-winning documentaries that are very, very educational, but not boring. They're all about health, science, travel, food, history. I mean, all that great stuff. You can download the app on your smart TV right now. That's actually how I watch a lot of them. By the way, my favorite feature of it all is that I can consume content at twice the speed, meaning I will be just as smart twice as fast or twice as smart just as fast. However it goes, if you guys are interested, use our code F-U-N-G at the link down below. It's $14.99 for the year, not a month, for the year. So that's a great deal. Back to the video. David, are you ready to try the $100 Beef Wagyu Katsu Sando? I am. Yeah, this is what came from it. Like we said, the Portuguese probably brought bread to Japan and I want to say like 1400, 1500. I mean, this one, guys, everybody knows the Katsu Sando. I mean, you have milk bread with the crust cut off. This is $100 for 12 pieces. This is about $7 a piece. I don't want this to slip out of my chopsticks. What I like about that is that it has the texture of eating a piece of fat, but not just the fat flavor because it's heavily marbled, but there is still beef meat in it. If you've had Wagyu before in any sense, this is like the top level. This is Miyazaki Wagyu flown in from Japan, not raised here in America. Right, right, right. Not just the bloodline that got imported. This is just nah. straight from Japan. Nah. You got like, you know, Morimoto, like rubbing the cow's belly, feeding them certain things. Before we go on this crazy sandwich journey through Manhattan, David, would you say it was worth it? $100 for the Wagyu sandwich. <laughs> the face says it all. First off, it's definitely worth it if you come with friends. I think it's an experience. However, would I come here all the time and get this? I don't know. Maybe if I had a good day in the markets. All right, you guys, we are at Sunny and Annie's, the originator of the Asian bodega sandwich. This is a Jackie Chan. This has sesame and black bean sauce. Wow. This is a Korean bulgogi bodega sandwich. But of course, this is the one that we're here for. This is the main event. This is the one that really got them famous. The pho number one. You have the roll, you have tomato, okay? You know, you don't usually see that in pho, but that's in Vietnamese food. You have the roast beef right here. You have the layer of hoisin sauce and sprouts, basil, lettuce, avocado, onions. Pho number, number one. How are they able to replicate the flavor of pho so closely? You know what really does it is the basil and hoisin sauce. Those are key. So basically it does have a lot of elements that you would have when you're eating pho, right? All right, straight up guys, the pho number one from Sunny and Annie's. I'm gonna give it a five out of five. If I live closer to here, I would get it all the time. This is a must try if you are in New York. All right, you guys, next up we got the Jackie Chan. This is a relatively new one. And sesame and black bean sauce. Wow. I do my own stunts, Jackie Chan with it. I do my own stunts, Jackie Chan with it. Black bean sauce is not something I would have ever imagined being inside of a bodega sandwich. Jackie Chan. Chan. Scallions too, I love the sandwich already. This is a jajangmyeon sandwich with mozzarella. Really interesting. What do you think of the black bean sauce bodega sandwich? Let's definitely try this one because this is different. I didn't know how I felt about it at first, but I keep eating it. I'm gonna give this a 3.7 out of five. I wanna give it a four though. Yeah, I'm gonna give it um, a 3.5. But that means that you definitely gotta try this if you're into Asian sandwiches, guys. This is probably the most unique one I've had. Okay, so for our last sandwich here at Sunny and Andy's, we have the Korean bulgogi one. I had to bring in Dan, our resident Korean here. Check this out, beef bulgogi. It has the glass noodles like the jop chair. Oh, it just looks like a whole bunch of panchan stuffed in a sandwich. It looks yeah. so good. There's some kimchi in there. It smells like a Korean church. <laughs> I think there's a steamed egg in there. 
that's steamed egg. I love all these elements. It's kind of interesting having them in a sandwich. Dan, I gotta say, man, I gotta revise my score for the bulgogi one. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Previously, I gave it a 3.75. And I am just so impressed by how authentically they're able to put together these different Asian sandwiches. Now it's Korean owned, but they also mess with Chinese flavors, Korean flavors, of course, and Indian flavors. Like they have their curry sandwich too. Yeah. Hey man, shout out to the Pan Asian Bodega Deli. All right, you guys, we're here at Golden Diner. We had to kick it off with the Asian club sandwich. Uh, outwardly in the macro view, looks kind of like standard, right? But then you get into it, boom. Katsu chicken, boom, QP mayo, boom, bulldog sauce from Japan. Asian club sandwich. I love the mayo. Oh my God, mayo. yeah. You know something's good when you have it continuously and it's continuously always good. Is that nothing about the flavors is too, I guess, foreign for people. Like it's very consumable for everybody. Absolutely. But yeah. for Asians, we can, we can feel it a little bit. The bread here is like different from any type of club sandwich bread I've ever had before. I'm gonna give this chicken katsu club sandwich a five out of five. Boom, five out of five, me too. All right, guys, next up we have a burger, and I know we did an Asian burger video a few months back, but we didn't get to include this one. This bun is a scallion milk bun. It has mushroom gochujang. That is something I've never had before. Gochujang, gochujang burger. burger. And you know what? This is like, it's so distinct to taste from like, like a regular, like, Regular diner burger, you know? That scallion bun makes such a big difference. Right? That is unlike any burger I've actually had. Yeah. Yo, come to Golden Diner, guys. Mm -hmm. You're fire. Yeah. I'm gonna take this over to Katsu Club. This is my five out of five. Southeast, Southeast Asian, Asian avocado, avocado toast. toast. Let's do this. Wow. Here we go. Oh yeah. Whoa. Wow. That's really good. <laughs> Even the bread Andrew, is you look really like good. Perfect. Hey, 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 you just eat. I'll be honest, avocado toast should not taste this, this good, and it does. Yo, that is the most flavorful avocado toast I may have ever had That's in my That's the life. most unique avocado it toast is. I yeah. ever had. Yo, shout out to yeah. Sam for being able to do, you know, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, green tea, tea coffee cake. cake. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Yo, look at they that. got hoji cha, two types of green tea. Yo, this is pretty interesting, because it, it looks like coffee cake, but not. It's not, yeah. Yo. I guess just the top is coffee cake. A lot of flavors in that one. I like that a lot. You know, when I say something about sweets, I don't take it lightly. <laughs> you really get to taste both the ceremonial green tea matcha and also the hoji cha. Was it hard or difficult as it seems on the outside to sort of seamlessly blend the American diner traditions with more Pan-Asian traditions? Uh, I actually think it's very difficult to do it as seamlessly as you described. It definitely took a lot of time and effort to come up with these dishes and recipe test them out. A lot of trial and error? Absolutely, a lot of it. All right, well, you did a hell of a job, man. Thank you. Next up on our Asian sandwich crawl through New York City, we've got Kevi Sara Cafe, which is a Filipino fusion breakfast cafe. We've known them for years. They've since moved locations, added a ton of stuff on the menu. We got to check back in. Yo, I'm so excited because David, there's actually a number of Filipino restaurants in the city, but no fusion Filipino cafes like this one. They have Filipino flavored ice cream, calamansi flavor, pandan ube flavor. They have uh, adobo paninis. They they even got other brunch items that are Filipino right. and coffee. Right, because there are a lot of dinner spots, but this is really specializing in brunch, breakfast, cafe food. Yo, let's see what they're up to. Oh my God, it's been a while. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, so here we got our two adobo sandwiches. Can you describe to us what's going on? Okay, so this is the pork longanisa. This is grounded pork, pesto, tomato, mozzarella cheese, grounded pork that we cook it in house. Pork longanisa panini. Yep. That is so good. My gosh. The sweet longanisa wow. sausage. Yeah. Typically eaten for breakfast, right? Yes, yes. So it fits perfect. Perfect. Oh my so we God. have it all day. This is almost like a Filipino sausage big muffin. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You guys have to try that one. <laughs> wow. With the pesto, it's setting it off. So this is the chicken adobo. So yeah, we have the same ingredients like the pesto, mozzarella cheese, tomato, and then that's the chicken breast that we cut into small cubes wow. and cook in adobo. Wow. Mm. I think this is my favorite. <laughs> the chicken adobo one. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, that's been the all time favorite. And you know what it is? I had this sandwich two years ago and you guys made it better even. Yeah, thank you. 
Take now we're under our Filipino ice cream. There are two flavors of ice cream here I've never had before. It's calamansi and jackfruit. What do people say about the calamansi? The calamansi, they said, it, yeah, just what you just said. No. Haven't tried it before. Yo, no, that's my favorite. Flavor. I gotta try the affogato one. Yeah. Take wow. a look, Dan. You guys did a great job with the coffee flavor. Really deep in there. My favorite, personally, was the calamansi. This is crazy. Wow. You can only get it here at Cabacera Cafe on Allen Street, New York City. Come get it. Guys, in this video, we are trying a lot of different levels of Asian-inspired sandwiches. And of course, sometimes you gotta go to the gourmet level, a little bit expensive, but here is a $14 chicken sandwich here at Wild Air. And Wild Air, they do a really, a lot of cool food concepts, and a lot of it is Asian because a lot of the chefs there are Asian. And so this one is the chicken sandwich made by Q, who's Vietnamese. Being from Texas, I try to keep it pretty pretty straightforward. The Asian ingredient in there is probably the yuzu kosho mayo. Guys, and if you can tell, that is chicken thigh. There is dark meat in there right now. Chicken sandwich by Q. That might be the closest thing I've had in America that tastes like the McDonald's chicken thigh chicken sandwich in Shanghai. And that is, of course, one of our favorite sandwiches in the whole world. So you guys gotta check this out. Okay, so our next sandwich here at Wild Air, which is a banger, by the way. This is a must get. This is the Chinese chili beef French dip sandwich. As you can see, braised short rib, Taiwanese preserved veggies. You have plenty of green onions. You have cilantro, but you have plenty of chilies there, guys. And then on the side, we have this beef ajouche, which is super dark. Wow. Nutty, spicy, juicy. Kind of has some elements of a spicy beef noodle soup. The baguette, now it sounds really crispy and hard, but it's actually really chewy. And once you get through that first layer, it's actually pretty soft. So you dip in the juice. This is a five out of five. Chili peppers are fresh. Meat is fatty and juicy. This right here is the best beef sandwich in New York City. All right, I'm here at Saigon Social where, of course, Helen is whipping up the best Viet food with a twist here. It's marinated in fish sauce and uh, lemongrass. Kind of play off of a traditional lemongrass chicken dish that we usually eat with rice. I mean, this is her version of the chicken sandwich and what I love most about it is that she is using chicken thigh and you can tell because it's not only a little darker but all the juices are flowing out on the bottom right there. Pickled jalapenos, I like that. What I really love about this chicken sandwich is that Helen put a whole new twist on it. There's a super strong like lime leaf flavor, which does remind me of Thai food because lime leaf is an element that they use heavily in Northern Vietnamese food. So it really does have that flavor bursting out of the chicken thigh. You get the whole meal plus tots for only $14. It's actually a really good deal. Everybody's got a chicken sandwich, but not everybody got a chicken sandwich like this. I'm starting to think that the options for Asian sandwiches is like limitless. Yo, our next spot is a dope concept that you probably do not have in your city. This is a second generation Bengali sandwich spot. And I think it's cool because when second generation people do fusion, you're always toying between the percentages. Is it gonna be 50-50? Is it gonna be 70-30? I would say this spot is a little bit more like 70-30, 70, 70 on the Western, 30 on the Bengali side, but either way, I think it's cool and we love to see it. Masala chicken sandwich. All right, everybody, I'm here with the owner and head chef, Ozzy. How are you guys? We're Bangladeshi Americans. Uh, when we first moved to America, we actually lived in the Lower East Side here. So us opening up a business here is like coming back home. So we make all our sauces in-house. It's our take on what we grew up eating. You know, so we have a masala chicken. We have a what we call a Bengal barbecue. And we use like a lot of, uh, you know, sweet, salty, um, spicy flavors that kind of brings up our, you know, upbringing. Um, you know, we appreciate you guys being here. You know, it means a lot to us and, you know, supporting us. That's what it's all about. Masala chicken sandwich. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff going on. With the carrot and cabbage slaw, there's actually some bun me vibes. That is so good. I, I taste a little bit of salt from the bun. Yeah, that is a Desi bun. Yeah, and man, this, look how juicy the chicken is. Yo, I've got to say, sometimes I'm craving chicken tiki masala, but I don't have time to sit down at a sit down spot, or maybe I gotta go do something and I'm just on the go. Definitely need to satisfy that craving. If you guys like the masala flavor, you gotta come by Bengali, Bengali fried, fried chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. Look at that. 
You know, I never had barbecue sauce that tasted like that before. It's very deep. At first, I think I preferred the tiki masala one because it was more familiar to me. But the more I get into it and just the more I can kind of like acquire and hone in on what I'm tasting, I actually prefer this one. This is a must cop. All right, we have a few extras here, Andrew. You are looking at a Bengali barbecue sauce wing. I know you love wings. I love wings, man. I love do the, the move. Smile. Do the move. I have a masala wing right here. Oh, it gave me that kind of sweet barbecue flavor that I get from American barbecue, but it just had a whole different side to it. Andrew, I learned something today. I love Bengali barbecue sauce. Yo, this this is fire. This is the standout. Here, here's why we've had some Desi food before, and I feel like that this Bengali chutney flavor is just a standout. Shout out to Knock. All right, we're here at Double Chicken Please. It is the hottest Asian owned chicken sandwich spot in the city and they have very high quality sandwiches. They range from about 12 to $16 each. So they're not super cheap, but here I got the Thai basil. It's called hot and honey. Here I have the salted egg yolk where the chicken is fried in a salted duck egg yolk batter. And then here I have your vegetarian option, which is a big block of tofu uh, with a lot of the sesame sauce on it. Here's the hot honey one, Thai basil flavor. All the things you love about the Thai basil flavor, it's a little more sweet, less intense. Chicken's really juicy, they use a lot of thigh meat in it. That's what I appreciate. Of all the chicken sandwiches I had so far, that is ranking up there. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a 4.25 out of five. That is a must cop. Next sandwich that's coming in with a lot of hype is the salted duck egg yolk. So this is chicken that is battered in salted duck egg yolk. Brioche bun, very soft. All right, guys, I'm not gonna be honest. This is probably an acquired taste. If you are not really down with kind of the dried shrimp and salted egg yolk flavor, you know, you don't have to get this one, although this is probably the most interesting tasting. The Thai basil one definitely tasted a lot more conventionally tasty, something that, you know, people have had before. Tofu sandwich, sesame seed bun, looking like a uh, McDonald's filet fish Let's get it. I never thought I would say that I'd enjoy a tofu sandwich so much, guys. The sesame seed paste adds a sense of nuttiness, a little bit more meatiness to it. Guys, if you like tofu or you're looking for a vegetarian option, this is a must cop. Here's my ranking. Thai basil, number one. Coming in second is the tofu sandwich. And third is the salted duck egg yolk one. All right, guys, I'm gonna be honest. Coming into this spot, I thought the salted duck egg yolk one was gonna rank number two, or if not, number one. But you know, it just goes to show you that the egg yolk thing, it can be implemented in different ways. And it's just really a preference thing because that is kind of an acquired taste. So guys, number one, Thai basil. Two, tofu. And number three, salted duck egg yolk. This is DCP, double chicken, please. On to the next spot. All right, guys, our next spot is Evil Katsu. It is a chicken katsu sandwich pop-up in the Lower East Side. Uh, the chef and owner is not Asian, but uh, used to work at Nobu and has some background in Spanish food. So, you know, I, he knows a thing or two. Basically, they're doing katsu sandwiches here uh, after losing all their jobs in the restaurant business. So shout out to them. Always keep hustling. Cool. Here in my right hand is the chicken one. Here in my left hand is the portobello one. They have a pork one. I just decided not to get it. Always got to try the vegetarian option. I'm gonna try the chicken one first. Chicken sandwich at Evil Katsu. Okay, so my initial thoughts are yes, I do think it would taste different. If it was done by a Japanese chef uh, for an Asian crowd, this sandwich to me does taste kind of American. And are there questions of appropriation? I mean, they told me that it's their take on the katsu sandwich anyways. So this one definitely tastes more American than other katsu sandwiches I've had, but I'm glad I tried it. It tastes very clean. Lots of Kewpie mayo. It still has all the traditional elements too. Milk bread with the crust cut off, Kewpie mayo. Overall, this is pretty solid. I'm gonna give this a 3.75 out of five. Next, I got the portobello katsu sandwich. Pretty much the same elements as the chicken one, but you just replace the chicken with fried portobello. All right, so funny enough, I like this portobello katsu sandwich more than the chicken one. I thought the chicken one, because it's like white breast meat, it didn't have as much flavor as the actual portobello mushroom does, which makes sense. Um, so when it comes to them doing like traditional stuff, I don't think a Japanese chef would make a portobello one. So that's kind of like maybe the fusion American influences here. 
but you know, the origin of the katsu sandwich and katsu in general, there are already fusion elements from the schnitzel and, you know, I think a European guy was in Japan and, and kind of made this uh, popular, so I'm not exactly sure. But either way, guys, it definitely tastes different than other katsu sandwiches I had. It tastes more American, but definitely get this portobello one. It will impress you, has lots of flavor. I'm with it. All right, so our next spot is CMB Cafe over in the East Village here. I have this crazy pork belly and egg breakfast sandwich. Guys, the chef and owner is from Turkey. That's Western Asia. Yeah, it's definitely on the outside of what you would consider the Asian borders, but hey man, him being from Turkey, I think they are doing things a little differently here. That is a house-made hot sauce right here, fluffy egg, really big, thick cut pork belly. You have avocado and cheese, I added that. This is crazy. I mean, look, at that's like an inch thick cut of pork belly right there. It's pretty hard to hold right now without the toothpick, but I'm going in for the bite. Pork belly egg sandwich, CMB Cafe. Oh, that is definitely the juiciest and fattiest pork belly sandwich period that I've ever had. And as you guys know, of course, Asians use a lot of pork belly, whether it's in Korean barbecue or uh, roast pork. Um, I think the chef being from Turkey, you know, he, he just thinking a little differently. Man, it's super fatty. You guys gotta be ready, you know, to feel a little sleepy after this. But let me tell you this, that is delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a four out of five. CMB Cafe over in the East Village by Tompkins Park. So throughout this video, we've seen that obviously, you know, Asians do actually have a lot of sandwiches out there, whether it's the bun mi or the Korean sandwiches from the deli or or anything else but definitely the asian breakfast sandwich game is something that we're not that heavy in minus some of the hong kong sandwiches that have like spam and egg in them um, which do kind of look like katsu sandwiches because they cut the crust off but definitely in this kind of like fusion western style i could see more asian elements even being in there whether that's like a sriracha hot sauce or like some type of other seasonings um i think it would be really cool uh, to see that so I mean hey man Asian breakfast sandwiches I think that's that might be the next wave all right you guys next up on our Asian sandwich food crawl we've actually got an Asian I don't want to say it's avocado toast because there's no avocado but like an Asian brunch brunch items here at Sunday to Sunday this used to be called the wasabi mama that's like a wasabi emulsion which is like a creamy salmon very uh you know you feel the Japanese influence the owners here are Indian and Filipino so this is pretty dope Oh man, wow. It's almost like I'm eating like a sushi roll almost like, right? We've heard that so many times, it's like a sushi roll on a piece of toast is what I always say. All right, next up we've got the Jolly Muffin. This is something I'm super excited to try. Get you, you got this, uh, their version of XO sauce on here too. That was good. The food here at Sunday to Sunday is official. Yes. The Jolly Muffin so far, man, this is mm, crack. Last but not least, guys, you would not expect in a spot that looks like Sunday to Sunday for there to be a fried rice, yep. but they do their own version of it. That's good. Oh my god. So good. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I gotta get another one of that. The egg? The egg, yeah. Oh, there's a lot going on in this dish. You guys put the Krispy Kreme wow. on the egg, right, to make the egg yeah, crack? It's so tough to figure out my favorite, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go with the Jolly Muffin. Mm, for me, this is my favorite. Pick. I'm a fried rice guy. I gotta go with the 537 fried rice. All right, so we're here at Thai Diner. We have two of their most famous sandwiches here. One, we got our Thai Diner breakfast egg sandwich, which is not actually a sandwich, but it's wrapped in roti. It has the saoi herbal sausage. It has egg. It has a whole bunch of other elements. Super tasty. Here we have the banana blossom chicken salad sandwich which has a mixture of rotisserie chicken. It's a cold chicken salad tossed together. Marco, have you ever seen, you know, Asian fusion sandwiches like this? I never had. It's my first time ever and I, I cannot wait. And I especially, I want that chicken salad on a bun. That's what I've been eyeing the whole time. Okay, this has a lemongrass and roasted chili dressing. Ooh, this got a, it got a nice kick to it. Really nice kick. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm like healthier eating this. It's, it just tastes healthy. Refresh with the Asian flavors could bring back more items like this that are out of date. And they should. They yeah. definitely should. Okay, this is something that is very, very fascinating, guys. This is like a roti. So you got the Thai influence. So if you guys know about Thailand, Thailand is a really, really interesting mix of like three different cultures. There's the native, you know, Thai, Thai Kadai influence. There's a lot of influence from India, which is the Indiosphere, and there's a lot of influence from China, which is the Sinosphere. So that's why Thai food is so interesting. So the roti comes from ancient India. Of course, you know, they also eat roti in India and in those parts of the world, but the Saoi sausage is from Northern Thailand. 
And then here you got your pungent shrimp spicy sauce right here. High breakfast sandwich. Wow. You were not lying. Holy shit, this is good. It's spicy, but it just has the right kick to it. With sausage, oh, tremendous. Tremendous, definitely coming back here. I think that this is a really great wow. way to introduce people to new items. Yeah. For example, you have eaten Thai food before, yes. Marco, but you were saying earlier, you mostly stick to Pad Siu. Yeah, so I always pick Pad Siu, and I've been here before eating it tremendous here. Well, Guys, you know what it is? I think the sandwich format allows you to be introduced to new flavors that you wouldn't normally order. Maybe you wouldn't normally order a side order of Saoi, you know, Isan sausage on your own, but just put it in a sandwich. That's how you get people to try it, put it in a sandwich. All right, you guys, next up on the Asian sandwich battle, we have 375 degrees in the Lower East Side with the bun mi chicken sandwich. Wow, all right, so this spot is owned by an Asian guy. He's actually Chinese Vietnamese, and this is the only Asian item he has on the menu. Uh, most of other, the other items are not necessarily appealing to the Asian audience, but man, this is a bun mi chicken sandwich. I think that this is really interesting because you would not think that this would work in a way, right? Because bun mi burgers, you're thinking beef, you're thinking pork, things that you typically put in a bun mi. From what I know, Andrew, the grilled chicken bun mi is a little bit more of a newer invention. Mm. Yo, so here's what you have. You have a layer of the daikon and carrot slaw. On top, you have the jalapeno salsa. You have the fried chicken breast. You have some uh, sriracha mayo, and then you have lettuce. All on a potato bun, let's do it. Bun meat chicken sandwich. Mmm. Really interesting. I gotta take another bite. It almost tastes like a little bit like a different Vietnamese dish, not necessarily a bun meat. Yeah, so David, Vietnamese actually have this sauce and it's hard to find. It's this green sauce that you put on some of the seafood, like the clams and the scallops. I forgot what it's called. I'm gonna pop up a picture. But that's what this jalapeno salsa tastes like. And to be honest, that sauce also kind of tastes a little Latino, so it's like a little Peruvian as well. So to be honest, yo, this sandwich is good. It doesn't really taste like a bun mi, but it's pretty fire. It tastes really fresh and it sort of contrasts with the greasiness of the fried chicken patty. It is white meat. Overall, I'm gonna give it a 3.75 out of five. If they would have used dark meat, I think it would have been maybe a four out of five. I don't wanna hold people to that standard because I know in America using dark meat for chicken sandwiches, it is tough. I would give this a four out of five. I thought it was refreshing, had a little bit of spicy kick to it. Overall, it delivered what I want. Shout out to 375. We got another one I'm about to go in on this Oh one. my gosh, see, you keep eating it. You only gave it a 375, just like the name. You gave it a 375, just uh, like the name. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it because it's named 375? It gets a four. All right. It gets a four, 375 gets Yo, a four. Call it 400. All right, so that's it for our sandwich excursion. Doing this video really reminded me of why we live in New York City. You got all these highly trained chefs taking the common sandwich to the next level. I mean, it really showed you how deep certain aspects of Asian culture are, you know, making its way into mainstream America and kind of being considered cool. So our top picks that we will be ordering again soon are Wild Air's Chinese Chili Beef Dip, Golden Diner's Gochujang Cheeseburger, Sunny and Annie's Fuzz Sandwich, and the Bengali Chicken Sandwich from Meat and Bread. But honestly, all of them were special in their own way so you let us know in the comments down below if you have an idea for an asian sandwich and the most creative and delicious sounding recipe is gonna get pinned let me hear your thoughts all right everybody thanks for watching hit subscribe click that like button and until next time we out peace anything with this bengal barbecue sauce i'm giving it a five out of five definitely come here and try it this is a must cop